Warning. The video you are about to watch contains a subject matter which some might find triggery. If you think you will be triggered by me discussing the attractiveness and characteristics of fictional women, I advise you to please click off of this video now. Hello and welcome back to another Rider Wizard podcast. In today's episode, I am going to be ranking my thoughts on the top 10 women of One Piece. All right, so the top 10 women of One Piece ranking. Now, I thought a lot about this, how I'm going to rank the women of One Piece, um, what exactly I'm going to be looking at. As far, obviously, it should be without saying. It's going to be attractiveness. How attractive are these characters? Now, my list is probably going to differ from yours immensely. You may not agree with my list whatsoever. Feel free to leave your own list down in the comments below. But besides looks... I'm also going to be looking at a few other characteristics. How important are they to the story? Um, how they act. If I have an issue with how they act, I'll probably point it out here. Um, and just all in all, what kind of... like. What draws me to them? And yes, a lot of the things that's going to draw me to some of these characters is the attractiveness, but I'll point out other things as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to start with five honorable mentions. These five women almost made the list, but just didn't quite get there. So starting off with our first honorable mention, Big Mom. <laughs> I know, you're probably shocked. Big Mom? No, before you go typing anything in the comment section, let me clarify. This is the Big Mom during her time with the Rocks Pirates. Not when she was yo any younger than this, and definitely not when she's older. For some reason, Big Mom was a weird character. Uh, Oda decided that at one point in Big Mom's life, she was going to be insanely attractive. I mean, how else does she have like 100 kids? But it was during her time with the Rocks Pirates where she was actually attractive. And I have to give it to her. She is. So, um... I kind of wish she had stayed like this or married Kaido. <laughs> it been just like all the kids are hers and Kaido's. Uh, but no. Um, so yeah, that's the first honorable mention. Next up on our honorable mentions is Uta. A relatively new character. I really did find her attractive. But I don't know just we didn't get very much of her and I feel like a lot of people have used Uta everywhere um, and I mean like on thumbnails the card game I'm starting to think there's almost as many Uta cards as there are Luffy cards next up on our honorable mentions is baby five she was quite attractive, but a little bit clingy. Uh, 
well, I might be attracted to a woman who's kind of clingy. This is way too clingy for me. Next up is Viola. Um, no real complaints with Viola. Uh, yeah, she's just quite good looking. I do. I will go into my weaknesses here in a minute, which might tell you why she's on the list. So, and coming in our fifth honorable mention, Perona. Now I'm into the whole goth look, but. Well, Perona is attractive. There's just something that, like, stops her from... She was really close to making the list, to tell you the truth. It was either her or my number 10 pick. I couldn't quite choose. And the number 10 pick just came in before that. All right, so before we get into the list... Let me go over a few details about myself and when it comes to women. First off, I am an absolute sucker for redheads. I also have an addiction to women with great legs. Um, and if those legs, if a woman puts stockings on those legs, wow. So, that might clarify, like, why... I mean, I guess, like, going back over the honorable mentions, Big Mom wore stockings when she was younger, uh, Perona, she sort of wears stockings. It's more like almost leg-length socks, I believe. But uh, they might be stockings. Um, also, I have a weakness for heels. Woman in high heels is just wow. And dresses. So dresses, high heels, stockings. <laughs> and there is one character that can put all those together and always looks amazing. But, like I said, there's going to be other factors. How nice or good of a person they are. Even if they're not a good person, how attractive is their bad side. You know, like women, some men like a bad girl. And just overall, what attracted me to them? Now, I know these aren't real characters. I know they're fictional anime characters. I'm not saying, I'm not joining the waifu cult. But if I had the ability to have a waifu that uh, people who are into anime and manga would call it. I guess is out of One Piece. This would be my top tens of who would I want. So starting off at number 10 is Vivi Nefetiri. Um, first off, she has beautiful long hair. It is blue, which doesn't come off very natural. But, oh my god, does she look very nice in a dress. Uh, she's sweet, she's innocent. And that's not just, you know, how she looks. That's also kind of her personality. Which, you know, a lot of people say they want her to join the Straw Hat crew. And I just, I don't know if where they're at now, if... She'd be able to be on that same level. Uh, I mean, some of the crew members we have aren't even on half the other crew's level. You know, Chopper, Usopp, you know, maybe even a little bit of Frankie. I mean, Frankie does have a little bit of an edge. Nami, you know, but these characters, they're not as good or as experienced with fighting or as good with fighting as like Sanji, Zoro, or Luffy, you know, who's Luffy is, you know, using hockey. I figure all the other crew members would be using hockey as well. Now, maybe Vivi could have learned hockey or something, but I just don't feel that she's quite there yet. 
So moving on to number nine, Rebecca. Now, Rebecca, much like Vivi, she does have that sweet innocence about herself. And my God, Oda's version of the Princess Leia slave outfit, which is how I always refer to her outfit from Dress Rosa. It honestly, I think it's better than the Leia slave outfit. Like it's it's better. It's more attractive. And I mean it does maybe cover up a little bit more or cover up a little bit less. I'm not really sure how to say that, but oh my god, it is amazing. And she knows how to fight. I think just a little bit better, but she does cower quite a bit. She can fight, but she can't fight. It's it's weird. Like, she can only fight people on her level. She's too afraid to try to fight others. Although I think that is something she could overcome. If she really put her mind to it. Now moving on to number eight. Coming in at number eight is putting Charlotte. Now I am going to be switching around the names to legal names like first last. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. That's how I'm doing it. I know in the Japanese culture, for some reason, they go with the surname first, then the actual name first. So I'm just doing this because that's how it makes sense for me to write it down. Uh, but back to number eight, putting Charlotte. She is beautiful. And even with her third eye, uh, I'm fully on Sanji's side. She is amazing, you know. She has that very cute, very sweet innocence. But she looks just as amazing when she goes completely psycho and wants to kill you. So, yeah. Um, she's a good fighter. She has a good story that still leaves me wanting to know what's with the third eye. I really hope we get to see her again and explore that. Um, I really wish she would have joined up with the crew and became Sanji's wife. It would have been interesting. Um, moving on to number seven. Is Khalifa. Now. I told you. I have. A weakness for stockings. And legs. And high heels. And this woman is. Every inch of that. Um, yeah. For a blonde. She is. I'm not particularly a big fan of blondes. Normally. Yes there are blondes out there. And it does take a certain kind of blonde like I just won't go for any blonde but yeah Khalifa is very attractive probably the one of the more attractive blondes on the show I don't think there's another blonde on this show that's as attractive as she is and I really hope we do get to see her again too Next up is Hayori Kozuki, uh, also known as the Princess of Wano, uh, Odin Kozuki's daughter, the sister to Momonosuke, and she is also very quite beautiful, but uh, I, I, well, she, I do agree she was beautiful. I was not a big fan of hers right at first because she was using that uh, those looks to cheat men out of money. And then it wasn't quite clear at first that, oh, these are bad men and she's, you know, taking their money so she could turn around and give it to the poor. I thought she was just trying to ruin people's lives and getting a thrill out of it. And it wasn't until later I was like, oh, okay, but yeah. 
she still used her looks and I mean that's fine I've always been a big advocate saying you know that is where a woman's true power lies the hotter the woman the more they're going to get out of people because of how they look if you need any evidence look at our society this is all in fact I think I feel like that's what Oda was trying to say with this character is that the prettier the women the more they are pampered and taken care of and given almost anything they want there's nothing that could really stop them if they really tried and I believe this character was a big way of projecting that now moving on to number five Riju Vinsmoke, Sanji's sister. This girl is beautiful. I wasn't extre extremely interested in like the shoes because those just look really weird. But the rest of her and the fact she's an amazing fighter really left something to be desired and she's also she's got a special ability from a devil fruit i won't say what because i don't want to spoil it but yeah and she's got like this whole butterfly thing you know pretty butterfly uh and she also has sixes tattooed on her legs which again Going back to weakness, pretty weak to beautiful legs. So, moving on to number four. Now, this one is controversial. Yamato. Now, I know they refer to Yamato as a man, but Yamato was born female. Yamato might have been raised... Because here's the thing. Yamato is a character. She doesn't want to physically be a man. She just wants to live as a certain man. She didn't want to. She doesn't just want to be her own man. It's not like she's like, oh, I'm going to become a boy and change my name to Yari. Or Harry or Joe. No. Yamato wants to specifically be one man in particular. One man who is dead. Odin. But she will never be Odin. And I think some part of her knows that. In fact, there's one section of the anime. I don't know how this plays out in the manga. I don't know how this plays out in the dub. But at least from what I remember in the English part of the anime, there is one time where she lays full claim to being a woman, to being a daughter, and that's when she's alone with Ace on Wano while she's trapped. Now, yeah, she does keep playing it off throughout the rest of the series that, series that I guess she is a man, and they always refer to her as son. And I keep being told that we're going to find out why, and, uh, you know, I know part of the reason why is because she wants to be Odin, even though Odin's dead. But I am really hoping that she will come back around after Wano or stay with the crew after Wano and eventually will come to the realization that she can be like Odin, but she can be herself. She can be Yamato. And the outfit she has on now is already makes her look incredibly attractive. The white to blue hair is also very attractive. So, yeah. 
Now moving on to number three. And this number three choice is probably going to surprise some people who might watch this. But I have to give number three to Boa Hancock. Now, yes, she is quite amazing looking. She is insatiably attractive. But I think the biggest drawback for me with Boa is simply the massive earrings that she wears. Um, she's a really good fighter. She's dangerous to fall in love with because of the whole Medusa-like thing. Now, I don't know if that's by choice or not, but it does kind of make me, you know, like, oh, what I really want to be with her if she could turn me, to, if just wanting to be with her will turn me to stone. And I could see Luffy's drawback for not wanting to be with her based on that. Because as soon as he shows an interest, maybe her power will work on him. But moving on to my number two. And at number two, we have the beautiful Nami. Now, the only reason Nami comes in at number two rather than number one is I really wasn't very attracted to Nami until after the two-year time skip. Before the two-year time skip, she kept her hair rather short. Um, and I don't know, just something about her after the two-year time skip with that long red hair, orange hair, really became very attractive. She also, in my opinion, I think her clothes started also like she was wearing much more attractive clothing at the time, too, after the two-year time skip. Um, I mean, when we see her come back, she's in jeans and heels. And, wow. I still say Usopp got the luckiest welcome back from Nami ever. But that's besides the point. Um, Alright. There is still some character traits I really want to know. Even though my friend Anime D Senpai keeps saying, it doesn't matter. I want to find out who Nami's parents are. I have a feeling... Okay, so... I have a feeling that... It's something very big. Something very important to the story. Because they haven't focused on it. And... Because they haven't focused on it... I feel like that's going to be a big reveal for the end. Um... We may learn that her name isn't even Nami. Because she was just a baby. When. Bellamere. Found her. Um, when Bellamere saved her. Um, yeah. She was just a baby. So Nami could have been the name she was given. But we could come across. Possibly her real parents. And find out what really happened to her. Also, there was this thing that was set up. Part of her, you know, being such a good navigator. There was this whole thing. Like, she has some kind of connection to the sea. And I want to know. What, what about it? Her family line has put that in her. I mean, they never really focused on it ever again. I feel like that was... A plot thread that was sort of dropped off by Oda. I feel like he wanted to do something with it, but then decided to just let it drop and never did anything with it again. But she does have this sort of control and connection with the elements, like wind and rain and clouds. and So I feel like that might be part of the connection with her connection to the sea. And I would love to see where that goes. And like I said, I want some big reveal. And for to shut my friend up once and for all, I would love it if Nami's parents were actually good people that just they 
she was kidnapped or something, and they couldn't find her. But I want her to have good parents that are people that spent their lives trying to find her, but couldn't. Because he is always saying that everybody's parents are bad in this world. Even though they do showcase some good parents. And he just completely glosses over that. But let's move on to the number one pick. And I'm sure you guessed it by now. Number one goes to Robin Nico. Or Nico Robin. Nico Robin is absolutely gorgeous. She has been since the moment we met her. She's always wearing beautiful outfits. She's incredibly smart. Incredible fighter. Um, she, you know, she has a devil fruit, so she is able to get right in there. And she actually combined her power with Luffy's power. And I would love to see that explored more. Like, them using hockey and combining their powers, or her combining her powers with someone else who has a devil fruit. Like, that would just be amazing. There's a lot of things I feel like sometimes, though, like they try to power down Robin when she is more powerful than it seems. But, yeah, she is a great character. Like I said, also incredibly smart. She is one of the few people in the world that can read the pony glyphs. And... She m might need to teach Momonosuke that. <laughs> but, yeah. I can't say enough good things about Robin. But that's going to go ahead and end this list. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you don't agree, if there's things that you would change, you're free to put your comments your own list down below of your top 10 women of One Piece. You can say why if you like, or just make a list and leave the why as a mystery. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Also, um, I didn't go to a commercial during this. So if you could, please consider checking out my book series, the Guardian of Light. It's available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. With that said, I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.